part two, the fairies here. So, um, oh yes, Timmy had saluted the mighty tree, jumped down and ran off. That night, the mighty tree could not sleep for once he had no idea what the outcome of the meeting would be. All day, the animals, insects, reptiles were wondering what, what could the meeting be about. There was much speculation. The rats thought it was something to do with them. Oh, please don't let Mighty Oak stop us eating all that lovely food. The bats were thinking it was something that they would be uh, not be allowed to hunt for food as the ladies would scream when they saw them flying around. The spiders thought it was them because some were making webs on the rides. Well, they would all just have to wait and see. Even poor Timmy, Timmy was questioned. He assured them he knew nothing about what the meeting was about, just that Mighty Oak had called it. Ron and Rose were running a little behind as Rose, Rose could not decide what to wear to the fair. Poor little Andrew was so bored he just wanted to leave. Rose was ready. His wife looked beautiful, but she was hardly dressed for the fair. Ron pointed that out to his wife, that perhaps her stiletto heels would not be suitable to walk on the mud. You're right, Ron. I won't be a moment. Poor Andrew. He said, oh, please hurry up, Mummy. Daddy never takes as long as you. Oh, dear, thought Ron. Luckily, Rose did not hear. Right, she thought, that's more appropriate as she checked herself in the long mirror. She wore grey slacks, a cornflower blue jumper, her walking shoes and a pretty headscarf, the blue paisley one that Ron had got her for Christmas. Now she was ready and they could leave. Hooray, said Andrew, jumping up. It was 7.45 and some of the animals who were slower had left in the morning to get to the mighty oak on time. Most of the animals were already at the garden. Some had arrived early as they just had to, they were too excited to know what the meeting was about. They had to hide quickly when Rose came to back door to call Lulu in their cat for her dinner. Lulu went in and started to eat. Then as soon as the family left at, out the front door, she went out through the cat flap on the back door to join her friends. There were creatures everywhere. Are we all here? said the mighty tree. Where's young Timmy? I'm here, sir. Well, young man, you've done a grand job. I'm proud of you, Timmy. He went red. You're probably all wondering why I've called you here. Tonight, no need, no need to worry, my friends. The family were at the fair for a while. We're quite safe. Now, as you know, the fair is getting bigger and bigger and noisier each year. Now, Mr. Perkins, the park keeper, is finding it harder to manage. There was a grunt from a tawny, tawny owl. It was yellow beak. It affects us as well. We've lost thousands of insects. Sadly, our house martins have lost two babies. They were about three days away from fledging. We've lost Clive, our friend the hedgehog. Any news on Clive, Sarah? Clive's wife said, fighting back tears. No, no news yet. We fear he's lost, mighty oak. No one has seen him since he pushed our babies out of the way of that fair contraption. Sarah had to stop. She was crying. Mighty Oak said, can someone explain? I can, said Whiskers a bank full. I was with Sarah looking for Clive and the children. We heard a loud noise. This machine thing was lowering the huge box. Just as it was coming down, Sarah spotted Clive. We called to him to warn him. He pushed the children out of the way and a big box thing was put on the ground. It's that test your strength thing. People hit a big button with a hammer. And if they're strong enough, they make a missile hit a bell. And it, <clears throat> no one can, no one saw Clive get away. No one saw Clive get away, said the mighty tree. No, we think he, well, um, it's all right, Whiskers, I understand. So you see, my friends, every year we lose more of our friends. I know some of you like the fair to come. Hooray for the fair, shouted some young rats. Shh. Be quiet, said one of the rat's mothers. Do not embarrass me. How, said Rory, her son. Because, silly boy, it's not appropriate after hearing about Clive. Oh, said Rory, sorry. As I was saying, I do I do realise the fair is popular with some of you, understandably. The rats, and I believe some foxes too. I've called you here to vote for the fair or against the fair. It will be a secret vote, so do not worry about that. While you're deciding, I will let you have a few minutes to think about it. 
Now, Timmy, where is Snubs, your friend? I'm here, said Snubs, stepping out from behind Timmy. Good. Now I have a mission for you both this time. Are you up to another mission, Timmy? Yes, sir. Good boys. In the garden shed, Ron has large hessian sacks in there, piled up in the corner. Can you get two of these, please? One each. The shed is open. Yes, sir. They both saluted at the mighty tree and marched off to the shed. Returning a couple of moments later, each carrying a sack. They place them on the ground in front of the mighty tree. Thank you, boys. Now, as I said before, this this is a secret vote. All you have to do is pick one small object, a stone, a stick, a leaf, it doesn't matter, and then place it in the sack you choose. One sack will be for the fair to come back and one sack will be for the fair to not come back. Rory whispered to the other rats, Don't panic, this is something even Mighty Oak can't do. Did you say something, Rory, the mighty tree said? Do you want to share your thoughts with everyone? No, no, thank you, said a Rory, blushing. Let us begin now, Timmy and Snubs. If you could take the sacks to the bottom of the garden, on the left side of the garden, that way everyone can queue from the back door and we won't see the sack that you're placing your items in. Timmy, please, your sack in the right-hand corner next to the house. Snubs, you place yours in the opposite corner next to the hedge. Now, if you want the fair to come back, place your item in the left-hand sack by the hedge. However, if you do not want the fair to return, place your vote in the sack on the right by the house. The two squirrels picked up a sack each, and then Timmy said to the mighty tree, What about you? Are you going to vote? Good boy. Yes, um, I know, Timmy. Look on the path. Andrew's left a couple of marbles. Use one for my vote and the other for yours. Timmy felt very honoured. Timmy come up here and leaned against my trunk. Timmy jumped up about three quarters of the way up and put his, his ear flat against the mighty trunk. In a very quiet, warm voice, he heard Mighty Oak say, Place my marble in the right-hand sack, please. Yes, sir, said Timmy. Oh, where do you want me to put my marble? The mighty tree said, Well, that's up to you, young man. Yes, right, sir. He jumped down and met up with Snubs. They both walked along the winding path towards the back door. Everyone watched them. It was so quiet. The mighty oak said, You can all start to queue from the back door. Going to the right, please. Snubs picked up an empty snail shell. I'll use this to vote, Timmy, he said, smiling. OK, you go first and then put your sack in place. Timmy stayed at the back door first in the queue and his friend went left along the wall, then turned right and he ran to his corner and placed his sack on the left-hand corner by the hedge. Oh, he just realised something. He ran back. He poked his head around the corner and looked left. He saw Timmy was first in the queue. Psst, Timmy. Timmy did not hear. Psst, Timmy. He looked up to see his friend was beckoning to him. Timmy ran to his friend. What is it? Here, you take my shell and put it in your sack for me. OK, whispered Timmy. Snubs ran back to Mighty Oak. Timmy placed his snub shell in his sack. He looked at the two marbles. One was green, one was blue. He couldn't decide which one for the tree. And then he thought, oh, I'll use the green one. Then he placed his blue marble in the same sack. As he ran back, he laughed to himself. I am silly, he thought. It doesn't matter who had which marble as we voted the same. He was still laughing when he joined Snubs, who said, What are you laughing at? Oh, nothing really. He did not want to tell his friend how silly he had been. A nettle weevil was after Timmy, and now the vote had started. One by one, they voted. Some, of course, needed help, as they would be too slow and there was not enough time. So the slugs and snails would get lifts from their friends. One poor snail was terribly sick all over the back of her lift. The poor snail was travel sick. The frog jumped along, but the snail had never jumped in her life. The frog was kind and didn't make a fuss. He, however, he was wary as he had to give her son a lift next. He needn't have worried. The young snail loved it and was not ill at all. After he'd voted, the frog gave him a lift back to his mother. As he slid off the frog, a jackdaw muttered something about his mother. Everyone laughed. She looked very cross, which made them laugh more. In the end, Lannis, her son, explained what made them laugh. I'm sorry, mother. We're not laughing at you because you're ill. 
It's just that the jackdaw pointed out that some people were sick on the rides at the fair. He was laughing at the people as they pay for that. His mother thought, and then she agreed. Actually, it was strange. She knew how ill she felt when the frog was speedily jumping up and down. She felt very dizzy indeed. Yes, humans are peculiar creatures. I understand. She smiled at her son. The time soon sped by, and it was now 9.45. The mighty tree had the advantage of being so very tall. He was able to see the whole park and, and beyond. He had been keeping a watchful eye on Ron and Rose as they enjoyed the fair. Andrew's daddy had won him a goldfish. He jumped for joy. They were now queuing up the bumper cars. Rose stayed behind and looked after Andrew's goldfish. As everyone voted, asked the mighty tree. Oh, nearly, sir, said Timmy. There's just a brimstone moth, elephant hawk moth, a family of common field grasshoppers, a common shrew. Excuse me, young man, said the shrew. I'm not a common shrew, I'm a pygmy shrew, she said proudly. Oh, sorry, said Timmy, a pygmy shrew. And that's it. Oh, sorry, sir. The common pipistrelle bats are just arriving. And then that's it. The mighty tree asked if they could please vote as quickly as possible. As it, as he was sure Ron and Rose would not be much longer. He checked the fare. Oh, no, panic set in. He could not see them anywhere. He stretched as tall as possible. Where are they, he thought. No, he definitely could not see them anywhere. Wait a minute. Way off at the back of the park where the double gates were, so he was sure, yes, it was them, talking to Mr Perkins. Gosh, that was close, thought the mighty tree. His thoughts were interrupted as he felt a tapping on his trunk. It was Timmy. He was knocking the mighty tree's trunk to tell him. He said, sir, he called, he called everyone. He called, everyone has voted. What do we do now? Good boy. If someone can get the... Two sacks and bring them back here. Yes, sir. Timmy jumped happily away, so eager to please. The mighty tree was proud of Timmy. He worked so hard for him. He really should be in his dray now, fast asleep.